I've been a psychiatrist for, for more than 20 years. For the first seven years, I practiced conventionally, you know, medications and psychotherapy. And then in 2009, I began incorporating nutrition principles into my work. And then three years ago, I decided to dedicate, you know, to really limit my practice to dietary therapies exclusively. And I use a variety of strategies in my practice, but the cornerstone of my work is the ketogenic diet. So I just wanted to share a few examples with you. So this is Deanna. When I first met with her, I asked her to write down how she was feeling when she was eating sort of a standard high carbohydrate diet. And so, you know, she used phrases like, you know, irritated and unproductive, hopeless, no life at all. And she met full criteria for food addiction using the uh, modified Yale food addiction scale, 11 out of 11 symptoms, full criteria for generalized anxiety disorder, and full criteria for depression falling into the severe depression range on the Beck Depression Inventory. In fact, she was so depressed and overwhelmed that she really couldn't follow a ketogenic meal plan. So I asked her, you know, keep it simple, just for the first week or two to get the ball rolling, why don't you try just eating only meat and nothing else and, uh, and see if that helps. And so within four days, her blood ketone level was 2.1 millimole. And within 12 days, she no longer met criteria for any of the three diagnoses she had met full criteria for 12 days before. And you just don't see results like this in conventional psychiatry. Having practiced conventionally for so long, I can tell you this. And then she wrote, you know, after just one week of eating no carbs, uh, there's a dramatic change. Emotionally, physically, my mood and outlook on life, I become less irritated, brain fog lifts, my joints don't ache, my mood improves. Every day, I just need to look at that list and remind myself that I don't want to go back. Carbs for me destroy my life, period. For 50 years, Bella's recurrent manic symptoms required lengthy hospitalizations twice a year. And as she entered her 70s, she began experiencing new symptoms of psychosis, which she hadn't had before. So for example, she was convinced people in her building were breaking into her apartment and stealing her belongings. Her daughter had to install cameras in the apartment to try to reassure her. And when I first consulted with her, she had just been discharged from a three-month hospitalization that included electroconvulsive therapy and uh, had been you know, really experienced minim minimal improvement from that hospitalization. So with her daughter's help, her daughter also follows a ketogenic diet, she started a strict ketogenic diet with the support of a keto meal delivery service uh, supplemented with two keto smoothies per day. And within two weeks, her symptoms began to improve cognitively. She began to become clearer, and her psychotic symptoms began to uh, uh, be reduced. So I wanted to share a statement uh, with you from her, from her daughter, uh, who, who knew that I was coming to this conference today. She said, before starting on her metabolic health journey, my mother was on very high doses of psychiatric medication and was still not well. Dietary changes have allowed her to decrease her medication, but even more importantly, they've given her a better quality of life. She no longer has paranoid thoughts, and she's not been hospitalized or even hypomanic for almost a year. And Bella herself wanted me to share this statement with you. Before keto, I could not go down on my medication without landing in the hospital. Because of keto, I've gone completely off of clozapine, it's a powerful antipsychotic, from 550 milligrams down to zero milligrams. I've now started reducing my quetiapine, another antipsychotic, and have already gone from 800 to 400 milligrams without a problem. And you know, really delighted with the diet, she told me, it's like a mini miracle, everything's coming up roses. This is Carl. Carl is a salesman and avid cyclist with lifelong depression and anxiety. Years ago, he went to a, a private uh, psychiatric clinic and had brain imaging as well as many specialized tests and uh, full evaluation. He walked out of the clinic with three diagnoses and three new prescriptions. The medications triggered the first manic episode of his life, and that eventually led to a marijuana addiction and nearly destroying his marriage and his career. 
he uh, was really uh, desperate and consulted with me because he wanted to try a carnivore diet. He believed that that would be the fastest route to recovery. When I first met with him, he met full criteria for generalized anxiety disorder, also had some depression as well. He did not meet criteria for mania or hypomania. To his great credit, he had years before conquered his marijuana addiction and decided to manage his, his mood disorder with rigorous exercise. And the rigorous exercise did help. It didn't completely resolve his symptoms, but it made a difference until uh, there was an increase in stress at work. And that triggered a three-month period of agitation, restlessness, and insomnia. When I met with him he first for the first time, he was walking between 8 and 25 miles per day to try to get rid of this energy. So he wanted to do a carnivore diet, so that's what I, I supported him in in the beginning. And uh, his, he was in mild ketosis by urine testing, uh, and within two weeks he started to feel better. And at six weeks, he scored zero on both of these tests. And he said, you know, at that point, you know, just another awesome week, six weeks without any symptoms of anxiety, agitation, depression. Overall, I'm consistently feeling better than I have for my entire life. And this is an interesting case because despite eating three to four pounds of fatty meat per day, he wasn't able to regain the 10 pounds that he had lost during that three month period of agitation. So we added back in some carbohydrate from whole foods, primarily root vegetables and yogurt. He really missed yogurt. And we landed at about 100 grams of carbohydrate per day. And with his uh, intense athletic activity, that wasn't an issue. And he remained zero on both of these scales even a full year later. And then about eight months ago, he uh, substantially broadened his diet. Now he is able to remain completely well so long as he avoids refined carbohydrates, processed foods, and lowers his carbohydrate intake on days when he doesn't exercise. So this is one of those cases that sort of challenges us to question you know, uh, whether long-term ketosis is necessary for, for everyone or whether some people would benefit either just from a temporary intervention or from simply improving dietary quality. But regardless, ketogenic diets uh, stabilize, energize, and protect the brain, the entire brain. For this reason, I think that no matter what the diagnosis is, perhaps with the possible exception of anorexia, I'm convinced that it really doesn't matter what the diagnosis is, and that these strategies make sense regardless of what the diagnosis is. And, and here's a, a case in point. This is Patrick. When he first came to see me, he would, he would say things to me like, my brain is turned up way too high, or my brain is falling apart. And he'd seen lots of specialists and been given lots of different diagnoses, but I'll let him tell you the story himself. Hi, my name is Patrick. I'll tell a quick story here about my experience with mental health disorders and using ketogenic diet as an intervention to help treat my symptoms. So when I was around 15 years old, I was diagnosed with you know, anxiety disorder, panic disorder, depersonalization disorder, which was easily probably the worst of the mental health. It's a horrible condition to deal with. Dealt with it day in, day out, and um, you know, over the course, I'm 33 now, so over the course of the last 15 years, I've tried a lot of different interventions. I've tried over 10 different medications, um, met with neurologists, neurofeedback, Ayurveda, lots of exercise, and just never was really able to um, get over the hump with conquering you know, some of my challenges. And so um, really, really desperate, even with a little bit of you know, moderate success with a, a mood stabilizer, I still, like I said, I never really got over the hump. So um, worked with Dr. Georgia Ede and did a lot of homework on you know, the right way to implement this type of diet. And I can say without a doubt, I mean, I've been doing it for three years. It's a difficult diet to do and I'm still doing it. And, um, you know, it stabilizes me tremendously. You know, grieving the loss of all the different foods that I like and I still do this diet, it makes me a lot more stable with my mood. It reduces my symptoms. I get less agitation and I just feel a lot better when I do this diet. So highly recommend it for people out there struggling with their mental health, um, especially if they failed, you know, more mainstream medications. I think this really is something that works and uh, needs to be considered for more people. So Patrick keeps his, manages to keep his uh, ketone levels between 0.5 and 2.0 millimole about 75% of the time. 
And then there's his, his mother, Fran, who was diagnosed with mild cognitive impairment 20 years ago. In April of 2021, my life was falling apart. After sewing for a lifetime, I could no longer figure out how to thread my machine. With both diagnoses of epilepsy and mild cognitive impairment 20 years ago, I knew that it was a good chance that I was progressing into a dementia. I saw my PCP about my condition. I scored miserably enough for the PCP to highly suspect that I had Alzheimer's type dementia. And he literally told me to go and enjoy the rest of my life. <sighs> this was devastating. My cognition continued to get worse and I didn't want to live that way. Well, very luckily, my son Patrick, who had adopted a ketogenic lifestyle, sent me the book, The Alzheimer's Antidote by Amy Berger, and she introduced me to Dr. Georgia Ede. I am so grateful. Pat was familiar with the utility of ketogenic diets for brain health, and we knew there was little promise in much else. So I started the ketogenic diet and implemented it to a T. And over time, I improved. I saw a neurologist who was thrilled that I was on the diet and tested me while on the diet. And I scored 27 out of 28 on his test. He said, it's time to take this tentative diagnosis off of your chart. I do know I was in serious trouble in April. Entering ketosis dramatically improved my condition to the point that I regained my ability to sew, to think more clearly, and to know that I can live like tomorrow is gonna to be great. She would really appreciate that. It takes a lot of courage to share these stories and I really appreciate those who are willing to do so, some anonymously and some not anonymously. And you know, she, she keeps her ketones between 0.7 and 2.0 millimole virtually all the time. Um, her son Patrick wrote about his mom, the ketogenic diet probably saved my mom's life she called me telling me she wanted to die a year ago. That was the hardest conversation I've ever had. She was absolutely falling apart in total despair. It's miraculous where she's at a year later. There's no pharmaceutical on the planet that could have done this for my mom. So I wanted to introduce you to my friend and colleague, Dr. Albert Danan in Toulouse, France. Inspired by his nephew's experience with a ketogenic diet, which helped him improve uh, epilepsy and seizures rather quickly, he was inspired to institute this diet with 32 of his own patients who have serious and persistent mental illness, many of whom he'd worked with for years and even decades in some cases, and instituted this in a, in a hospital setting. And I'm working with Dr. Laszlo and Dr. Westman to organize and analyze his observations. And while I can't share the data publicly yet, he saw unprecedented improvements in his patients' metabolic and psychiatric health. And you know, uh, two thirds of his patients left the hospital on less medication than they uh, were taking to begin with. And you don't see that in, in, in psychiatry, in, in patient admissions. Almost everybody leaves on a lot more medication than when they went in, as many of us know. So when it comes to uh, ketogenic diets uh, for mental health, uh, let, me just, let me just skip through. There are challenges to ketogenic diets for mental health. There are mental health challenges specific to mental health. The psychiatric conditions themselves pose additional challenges to learning, initiating, and maintaining a new way of eating. The keto adaptation period can be particularly challenging psychiatrically. You can sometimes see temporary worsening or appearance of certain psychiatric symptoms. In my experience, this usually improves by week three for many people and does not happen to everybody. But these people need support, education, monitoring, close monitoring, and it's very hard to come by because there, there are many systemic obstacles to seeking metabolic care for mental health diagnoses, many of which are listed here, including cost barriers to care, there are no billing codes. Most clinicians in this space do not take insurance, including myself, although I do a lot of pro bono and reduced fee work for longer term clients, inclu including all of the people whose stories you heard today. So um, I will leave the discussion of how to move the field forward to, to the rest of you. Thank you.